I'd like to call the meeting to order, please. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Could I have a roll call, please? Councillor Clements? Present. Councillor Langevin? Excused. Councillor Micucci? Present. Councillor Moriarty? Present. Councillor McDonald? Present. Councillor Nicola? Present. Councillor Peliquin? Present. Councillor Regis? Excused. Councillor Vandal? Present. Seven here? Thank you. Agenda item number three, consider and accept the council reorganizational minutes of Monday, July 30th, 2012. So moved. Second. Any discussion? A roll call, please. Council Marcucci? Yes. Council Moriarty? Yes. Council McDonald? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Council Peliquin? Yes. Council Vandal? Yes. Council Clements? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Agenda item number four, subcommittee reports. A, general government is Councilor Regis, and I don't believe there's been any meeting so far. No. Okay. B is DPW, Councillor Vandal. Chair, summary of the DPW meeting held Wednesday, August 8, 2012 at 7 p.m. in the Rice Conference Room. Excuse me for a minute, Councillor. Can you, can you hear, Councillor? Just bring it forward. Can you pull his microphone a little for him, please? Great. See if that helps. Oops, watch it. I'm, I'm sorry. That's great. Summary of the, that's better. Summary of the DPW <laughs> meeting held on Wednesday, August 8, 2012, 7 p.m. in the Rice Conference Room. Attending were Council Chairman Committee members Dali Marcucci, Amelia Peliquin, and I, and two citizen members, candidates Jim Pioffi and Mark Morin. Also attending were Councilors Pam Regis and Kathy Nicola. DPW Tom Daly was also in attendance. First agenda item was to discuss and approve appointment of Jim Pioppi for a one-year term effective uh, 8 12 to 7 13. Discussion held, motion made to appoint Mr. Pioppi to the DPW subcommittee. Vote taken, all in favor. Second agenda, second agenda item was to discuss the appointment of Mark Morin for a one-year term effective 8 12 to 7 13. Discussion held, motion made to appoint Mr. Morin to the DPW subcommittee. Vote taken, all in favor. Third agenda item, we discussed entering into contract with MassDOT and or ETNL Corporation to construct new additional <coughs> water tower and to replace 2,100 feet of eight inch water main in area of East Main Street and North Woodstock Road at, at intersection with one inch main in the amount of $225,000. Details presented by Mr. Daly and Mr. Clark. Motion made to enter into contract as presented and to submit to council for ratification. Vote taken, all in favor. Meeting adjourned at 7.55 p.m. Full minutes of DPW subcommittee are available in the town clerk's office. Thank you, that's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. C, Education and Human Services. Councillor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. No report and no meeting scheduled. Thank you. Thank you. D, Planning and Development. Councillor Clements. Thank Something? you, Madam Chair. <laughs> A meeting of the Planning and Development Subcommittee was held on Thursday, August 2nd in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance was Councillor Moriarty, Councillor McDonald. Also in attendance were Councillor Regis, Town Manager Clark, Sandy Ackley. Evelyn Petrelli, Jamie Stafflin, and Michael Janes. Uh, we call the meeting at 7. First agenda item was to discuss and vote to approve the appointment of Evelyn Petrelli to the PD subcommittee for a one year term effective August 1, 2012 through July 31, 2013. Mrs. Petrelli introduced herself and gave a background of her services. I point out that she's not new to this, she's been doing this for quite a long time. A motion was made uh, by Council McDonald, seconded by Council Moriarty, with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the appointment of Evelyn Petrelli to the Planning and Development Committee for the next year. Let's vote by show of hands. All in favor, 3 0. 
Agenda item two is to discuss and vote the appointment of James Staffslin of Southbridge to the P&D subcommittee for one-year term, effective August 1, 2012 through July 31, 2013. Ms. Staffslin introduced himself and expressed his interest on being on the committee. Uh, he is from town. He has a small business here. And again, we're glad to have new people come out and, and do this because uh, everyone's invited to participate. We still have openings. A motion was made by, the, by Council McDonald, seconded by Council Moriarty, with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the appointment of James Staffslin to the PD subcommittee for a one year term. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, 3 0. Motion was made by Council McDonald and seconded by Council Moriarty to take a recess, all in favor, 3 0. We recessed at 7.05, and then we called the meeting back to order at 7.12. Agenda item three was to discuss and vote to authorize the town manager to execute documents relative to the town of Southbridge CDBG housing rehabilitation program for low slash moderate income owner occupants until June 30th, 2014. Councillor Clements explained what the program was about to the new citizens members. Ms. Ackley explained legal privacy issues in regard to this program and she also discussed the program at length um, and the uh, increased applications from Hispanic families after a door-to-door -door effort was made. A motion was made by Councilor McDonald and seconded by Councilor Moriarty with a favorable recommendation to Council to authorize the town manager to execute the documents relative to the CDBG Housing Rehabilitative Program. Vote by show of hands. All in favor, 3-0. Agenda item four, discuss and vote to approve the proposed CDBG contract agreement between the Town of Southbridge and Fuss and O'Neill, Inc., a consultant fee not to exceed $37,600 for the sidewalk engineering and design for Chestnut Street. Mrs. Ackley explained the area that has sidewalk problems on Chestnut Street from Maine to the Community Center. Funds were applied for in FY 2011, and a CDBG grant was given to get bid-ready plans and specifications required in order to apply for the construction funds. Bids were requested and four bids were received. <coughs> Two bids were ranked highly advantageous. Buston O'Neill was the lower bidder at $37,600. A motion was made by Councilor McDonald, seconded by Councilor Moriarty, with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the proposed CDBG contract agreement with Fuss and O'Neill for a consultant fee not to exceed $37,600 for the sidewalk engineering and design for Chestnut Street. It was all in favor, 3-0. Motion to adjourn was made by Councilor McDonald, seconded by Councilor Moriarty. All in favor, we adjourn the meeting at 740, respectfully submitted by Evelyn Rivera, the recording clerk. And we currently have a meeting scheduled for Monday, August 20th, 7 o'clock in the Rice Conference Room. Thank you very much. E is protection of persons and property, and that's Councilor Langevin's subcommittee. I don't see any meeting or minutes in the packet. So we'll move on. Chairwoman's announcements, that's me. Councilor Clements did allude to the fact that there are still openings on some of the subcommittees. If you're interested in becoming a member, um, joining one of the subcommittees, please contact the town manager's office for more details. And there are forms in the office, um, there are committee board interest forms that you would fill out and bring back, and they'll get that to the uh, appropriate chairperson for their subcommittee. Um, let me see, what else did I want to? Oh, this is just a little bit of housekeeping for the council. I was asked by um, the administrative uh, assistant in the town manager's office that when you pick up your packets on Thursdays, she asks that you come in between the hours of 5 and 7. After 7 o'clock, the packets will be, that are left will be delivered to the police department. Just wanted to make the mention of that. Um, and I'm going to turn it over now to the town manager, Mr. Clark. Thank you, Madam Chair. I do have uh, several issues tonight or several uh, items to, to bring up. I'll, I'll start with the really good news that the, um, the school project, uh, as was indicated in some of the last votes that the council took, that we would have it complete. Uh, we had achieved substantial completion on the new middle high school on July 30th, 2012. And I was going to say we have the documents to prove it. And then we also, uh, on uh, August 7th, 2012, we received the uh, occupancy permit. It is a temporary occupancy permit for 30 days. Uh, the two issues that kept us from issuing the permanent one are one of them is already resolved, and the other one will be resolved shortly. So the uh, occupancy is valid, and they actually literally turned the keys over to the uh, the new the new principal at the uh, at the facility, um, whatever the the seventh was last Tuesday or Wednesday. So I think on behalf of a uh, I know in almost the four years that I've been here, I think I've been involved in that project. 
virtually almost at least once a week for the time that I've been here. So for me, it's a, a great source. And they said to me, well, do you want to come back? And I said, absolutely no. I turn the keys over and then I'm done. <laughs> But my, my work is done in terms of that. And I wish the uh, school department very much success. It's an excellent facility. Uh, the schools are doing tours. I believe they're uh, 9 in the morning, uh, 1 in the afternoon, and then 6 at night from now until when school starts. So if, if folks are interested, uh, please contact school administration to get additional details. In terms of, uh, I do have a, another item that we have a, a new member of the staff. We had a, a, a person leave a part-timer leave and we've replaced that part-timer with someone that is uh, more, more uh, dedicated towards HR related functions. And I do have this evening, uh, literally hot off the presses today, uh, and this is, it's too bad Council Regis isn't here. In, in the time that I've been here, she has asked about annual employee performance evaluations. And the new staffer uh, got right to work on the performance evaluation document. And I do have uh, copies just for the council so you get a flavor for uh, what, we'll, what we'll be doing. Initially, this will be done strictly with the uh, non-union folks, and then it will be shifted, hopefully, through the negotiation process to uh, union personnel as well. But per collective bargaining obligations, we do have to make sure that we conclude those collective bargaining obligations before uh, implementing anything. But it is a, uh, a vehicle that we hope to use to uh, kind of strengthen management's relationship with its employees to provide uh, good feedback and some expectations of what management would like to see. I do think we have a, a very good, very solid uh, department head level management in the community. And overall, I think we have a very good workforce. So hopefully this just adds to our ability to uh, refine and define that as time goes on. With all that being said, uh, my next item is that I am planning on taking a vacation. Uh, I will be gone from uh, August 20th to August 31st. Uh, and in my absence, I'll, I'll be back the day after Labor Day. In my absence, per the charter, uh, Karen Harnoys, the finance director, will be the acting town manager during that vacation period. I will be out of state, always available, unfortunately, by phone. But I will be out of state, so not available to come back for things. On, we received a uh, news release from the Southbridge Water Department just informing folks that the Southbridge Water Department will be performing hydrant flow tests on Wednesday, August 15th at approximately 9 p.m. The location tested will be North Main Street, Charlton, and Worcester Road. Uh, the procedure will include testing the operation and capacity of the hydrants on the property. The department requests that during this period, customers check their water before washing clothes. Customers may also get accumulated sediments in their house laterals the next morning. This will clear after a brief run of water at the tap. So if you're in the North Main Street, Charlton, or Worcester Road area, please be aware that that activity is going to occur. The uh, Southbridge Cultural Council is doing, once again, its community needs survey. If you're interested in participating in that, I believe we have the form on our website. Uh, so please look up the form. And if you could provide some information to the, the Cultural Council, that will help them in how they determine how grants are allocated to folks in the community. And just uh, two last items in regards to um, the tornado. We have uh, received official word, although I don't have yet in writing, that the uh, town will receive $286,500 for the damage related to the tornado um, up on the Charlton Street area, that we will use uh, $266,500 for drainage issues. I know that. Um, I believe it was Mr. Butler had come in and asked for specific work to be done up there. So we, we do have at least an obligation for the funding. We have not yet received the contract, but once we receive it. And then the balance of the money, $20,000, will be uh, allocated for picking up the debris on the side of the road. So as people bring material to the curb that's storm related, uh, we will hire contractors to come in and pick that up. Uh, details will be worked out, and we will not commence any work under that until we actually receive the contract from the Commonwealth of Mass. And then on the same topic, we did receive a uh, just today in today's mail a notice to proceed from the state 
we had put in for uh, tornado relief related to some guardrail work that needed to be done up on Pleasant Street. Uh, we did get an agreement letter today that, we, that the uh, state uh, Mass Department of Transportation would reimburse us for that work. And that amount is $78,502.69. So we will commence that work uh, as timely as possible. But I think that's pretty good that we put in for these requests and have started to see back the actual contract documents that we can then use to uh, commence the work on that. That concludes my uh, comments this evening, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Clark. And I'd like to also thank you for all of the work that you've done on the, uh, the school. Greatly appreciate your hard work and diligence keeping the costs down and keeping us within budget. Thank you again. Thank you. Um, moving on to agenda item number seven is the swearing in presentation portion of our meeting. A is Wild Animal Control, Southbridge, Mass. And it's Mike Terrio. Hi, how are you all doing tonight? Uh, my name is Mike Terrio. I'm the owner and operator of uh, Call the Wild Animal Control. Um, my job is basically to um, resolve conflicts uh, safely and excuse, humanely. Excuse me, oh, yeah. one second. Can't hear you. Yeah, just put your mic. Oh. Can you, I might want to. Whoa. <laughs> that better? Better? Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Mike Terrio. I'm the owner and operator of Call the Wild Animal Control. Uh, my job is basically to uh, safely and humanely resolve conflicts between uh, the public and wildlife. <clears throat> we use uh, humane trapping and uh, everything like that, which is basically cage or box type trapping. We don't use conor bear traps or anything that's going to hold the animal by the wrist or anything like that. Um, uh, we use, um, like I said, humane trapping and everything like that. We operate mostly be, uh, around central and southern Massachusetts, all throughout Massachusetts, but mostly southern and central Mass. Uh, we're also on call 24-7, just in case of an uh, emergency re arises, we can uh, respond to that uh, anytime. Uh, the most common animals we deal with are probably, I'd say, raccoons, skunks, uh, beavers, bats, mice, basically anything that you really don't want around your house that just maybe spray and be smelly or just be tearing up your lawn or something like that. <clears throat> Basically, when you uh, first contact us, we'll show up at your house, do an inspection of your house inside and out, um, make, look for entry points and exit points, and figure out what kind of animals are initially causing the problem. Um, after we find out uh, what's causing the problem, uh, we will make an evaluation of that and uh, give an estimate on the job, remove all target animals to your specifications, whether they are dead or alive, unfortunately, um, either by exclusion, which is uh, basically a one-way door, like if a squirrel's getting into your attic, I can install a one-way door. It'll go right out the door and never come back, and then I just plug up the hole. Um, or you can do uh, cage, cage trapping, which is humane trapping, which I can trap the animal. I know I got the animal. Would you like me to release it on your property? Or I could take it away, uh, which would be animal removal from, you remove the animal from the property. <clears throat> uh, also, after I do that, I make sure I do preventative repairs. Like if it's getting into your house, I, nobody wants another animal getting back into your house. So I'll plug up the hole with either a uh, wire mesh, uh, like uh, chicken, chicken wire. It'll cover up the hole, make sure the animal can't get back in. Like if it's getting under your uh, porch or your shed, we'll go around and we'll make sure we get a steady fence around the shed or the porch so that way it can't get back under or back into your house. Uh, other things we do, we also do attic cleanouts. If you ever had um, squirrels, raccoons, bats, anything that's going to wreck your attic or tear it apart, um, usually with lots of uh, raccoons uh, that get into attics, they uh, tear up all the insulation, usually bear their young in the attic and everything like that, and that can be a really messy thing, especially when they all go to the bathroom up there and nobody really wants that in their house. Um, <laughs> So I highly recommend it if you've ever had that, just rip up all the insulation, vacuum, decontaminate it, make sure it's uh, good to go because raccoons do carry a very nasty parasite called uh, raccoon roundworm and nobody really wants that. Um, we also do animal rescue too. Uh, if you have a sick or injured animal or a baby animal that needs assistance, we'd be more than happy to show up and take care of that for you guys. Um, we show up, basically pick up the animal, bring it to a wildlife rehabilitation center where it can actually get the help it needs to be released back out into the wild and live a happy life once again. Um, 
Also, if you also encounter any of any animals that aren't on a problem animal control list, like snapping turtle, pigeons, uh, bats, rabbits, chipmunks, skunks, beavers, what, uh, porcupines, what, uh, raccoons, anything like that, we can still help you out with it. We may not be able to remove the animal from the property, but we can still help you out with scare tactics, tactics, um, maybe barriers or something like that. If you have like a hawk in your chimney that fell down there, we'd be, we, you could give us a call. We'd be more than happy to come out and remove that animal, release it on the property, and it'll fly away. Then we'd probably ask you if you want to do a chimney cap, which will prevent other animals from getting into your chimney or anything like that. Um, Unfortunately, we do not do domestic pets. I get a lot of calls for, hey, this dog is barking across my street. Come and shut him up. I can't. I'm sorry. It's not my job. I'm only licensed to do wildlife. So I tell them you have to get in contact with your local dog officer or animal control officer. Um, when people do call us, I get a lot of uh, questions on our pricing. Uh, prices and trapping services uh, usually vary due to location type of animal, the number of animals removed, uh, the severity and complexity of the problem too. So uh, those are all factors in the billing uh, process. But I do offer discounts for uh, senior citizens and disabled in individuals, and I'm always trying to provide the best service that I can for them. Um, and that would be basically it. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Ms. Theterio, a couple of things. Are you here in Southbridge? Yep. Where are you? I'm here in Southbridge, Massachusetts. I'm located on Prince Road. Prince Road? Yep. And how would we get, just Call of the Wild is the name of the? Yep, Call of the Wild Animal Control. You could reach me um, on Facebook. Uh, I have a Facebook page called Call of the Wild Animal Control. Uh, it's actually a picture of me and a skunk, so you can't really miss that. Um, <laughs> then also you can get in contact with me through my number, which is 508-344-3237. And like I said, we're on call 24-7 to help out anybody that has any problems or anything like that. And basically try and help the animal and the customer the best we can. Do you ever get calls for feral cats? Uh, yeah, all the time. Do you, are you able to do anything about a feral cat? I'm not really licensed to do anything about feral cats. Um, I, you can try and help them, but that's more along the line of um, like ant regular animal control, like the town animal control. I and I have to deal with more along the line of like wildlife because that's more what I'm licensed in. Thank you. Does Anytime. anybody else have any questions? Councillor Marcucci? I do. Thank you, Mike. Oh, no problem. I'm very happy to see you. Oh, thank you. Do you trap woodchucks? Yep, absolutely. I have just destroyed my garden. Well, if you have a problem, I have a bunch of flyers right here. Feel free to take one, and I'd be happy to help you out. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Anytime. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Anybody have any more questions? No? Okay. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Have a great night. Thank you. You too. Center of Hope, Jim and Cindy Howard. Just, uh, it's just Cindy Howard. Thank you for inviting me here tonight to speak about what's going on with the Center of Hope. Most people in town have known about the Center of Hope. We've been here since 1956, but they don't know how much we have changed in those 56 years, actually. Um, we uh, have changed, we are one of 17 ARCs in Massachusetts and one of 715 in the country. We're still the largest organization in the world for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Um, so we, are, we have the uh, support and backing of a, a, a very wide organization. In this area, um, starting in 1984, uh, the uh, agency had a $5,000 budget um, and it has grown to be uh, about uh, 11 million dollar a year agency now. We uh, serve 61 towns in Massachusetts and about 20 towns in northern Connecticut now. Um, about 600 families and, and all day serve, almost all day services. We have one 811 project over on West Street with uh, nine tenants there. Um, we um, work very well with all the other agencies in the area who serve people with uh, disabilities as well. And we work primarily for a Department of Developmental Services and Mass Health, but some Mass Rehab Commission, et cetera. One of the things that help, makes us stand out in the state is the fact that one of the largest things we do is help people vocationally. And 
of course, we hope that people will uh, be able to get jobs out in the community, but um, we became entrepreneurial in the idea that um, if we can't find jobs, we'll uh, start a business and create jobs. And so we serve about 200 people um, getting jobs. We have 13 small businesses, um, and uh, we want everybody in town to know what those businesses are. They're all service businesses, and uh, we, although we like to have people contribute to our nonprofit, um, we also uh, would like to um, invite everybody to use our services as a, another way to support our programs and the people that we serve. We have um, about 229 employees right now, so uh, I guess we're up in the top 10 of employers in Southbridge now, somewhere in there, um, which is uh, in 1984 there were two employees, and so we've grown a lot through the years. Um, the uh, longest running small business we have is Norris Corporation, and that's a um, company that does subcontract packaging and assembly. And the other thing that sets us apart is people from the community work there as well, doing the subcontract packaging. So it's an integrated environment, everybody doing the same kind of work. So if you uh, come into our place, you will see us working for Hasbro. Um, we're actually working on a job right now where we're um, filling the crinkle cut bags of red and green um, stuff in bags for Christmas tree shops. So when you go to Christmas tree shop this year, um, be sure you buy uh, some of their uh, uh, different kinds of um, shredded paper because we are doing that, um, that kind of job. Uh, we uh, also have a direct mail marketing business, a banner and sign business. A lot of the signs that you're seeing around town and uh, many of uh, the folks over here have used our services for uh, signs and, and banners. We have a, a print service. Um, you can even rent a mailbox from our, our, our uh, Honest Town Post on print. We have a, um, a Books and Beans coffee shop as well as a consignment shop all in the same uh, building over at 100 Central Street. Um, we'll put a box in your business or your house that, um, for you to throw your cans in and we'll uh, do can redemption. Uh, every little bit helps, 30 or $40 a month we get from that. Um, we also can shred your paper. We have a, um, a shredding service um, if uh, you'd like to use that. We do yard work. We'll come out and cut your yard and, and rake up your yard. We don't, we don't do a lot of real heavy landscaping. And we also do a clean out and removal service. We'll come into your house or your apartment and help you clean out. Um, it's not a real moving business, but we do help people clean out the apartments. We, uh, I have to always look at this form because I'm always ready to forget something that we're doing. We've grown a lot a lot through the years. We do also do some construction services. We've done a lot of our own construction. Um, we own three buildings in town and uh, all of that work has been done by uh, us that needs to be done. Uh, we have janitorial services. We can come out and clean for you at your business. Um, and we also, the favorite business that we have that everybody in town seems to like the most is our car detailing service, just the details. Um, and uh, we have a great price, and it is a training place for people. All of the things that we do are a way for folks with disabilities to be able to learn the skills so they can go out and work at Kmart or work at um, even a, a, a shelter for animals, so that we have some folks who do that. We have at least 80 people out volunteering all over the area. We have 35 or 40 people who volunteer even in the hospital. So um, we're out and about everywhere. Um, in fact, once a month we have what's called a sandwich and social. Um, that's a way, hopefully, to get people to come in to see what we do because people always walk away saying, I really didn't know, I really didn't understand. I'm so glad I came. So you're all invited to come. We have one tomorrow at noontime. You have to eat lunch anyway, so if you um, we're planning on going down a subway and get a sandwich. Well, instead, come to our place and we'll feed you your lunch and we'll talk at you about what we do and then we'll take you for a tour. And you can stay for half an hour, an hour, or an hour and a half, whichever works for you. 
Um, thank you for inviting us to uh, participate today. You're always welcome to come for a tour. You can just give me a call at any time. I actually have, I brought with us a little uh, marketing packet and I'm going to leave them here for folks to take. They have coupons inside for all, for all of our um, businesses that so you can get a cup of coffee or um, a percentage off a sign or uh, car detailing. So I'll leave a bunch of them here for you. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Any questions? Council Vandal. How much do, do the clients at the Center of Hope get paid? They get paid what's called a commensurate wage. They get paid, it's, we have a special Department of Labor certificate, which allows for them to get paid. They get, if they're working on piecework, they get paid the same um, amount per piece as a normal person would get. If they're slower at it, they will still get the same amount per piece. Um, it's a very uh, um, well thought out plan so that people can get jobs. Um, most of our folks are slower than other people and they wouldn't get hired in a regular environment so this has um, all been created to help them get paid. A lot of our folks get paid regular minimum wage or higher. Minimum wage? Most of them? If, because uh, I just read an article, yes. I think it was in a Sunday paper about that and it said that they weren't paying minimum wage. And the ones that were making the money was the people that own the companies that these people are working for. Uh, we work very hard to make sure that people are paid appropriately. In fact, every two years, the Department of Lab Labor requires that we resubmit what we're actually doing with folks. Thank so. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I didn't realize how quickly you grew. 56 years is nothing. <laughs> Since we bought the building at um, 100 Foster Street, we've grown about $700,000 a year, and that's mostly because we keep adding people. In fact, we're out of space and trying to work that all out. Mm. Thanks again. Okay. C, Jim Morin, our health director. Thank you for your time tonight. I just have a quick presentation uh, on the duties of the health department. And inside this presentation, there's also a follow-up on the education enforcement program that we're working with on the town, too. So it'll be at the tail end of this. I don't know if the project is working or not. It's coming. <laughs> I apologize for that. Okay. Um, so basically what I'm going to try to accomplish tonight in, in about 10 minutes is a, a, a bunch of work that we do at the health department that, um, that local public health has been trying to do for a long, long time. So bear with me. There's, there's a lot of information here and I'll try to do it as cleanly as I can. So basically, um, the responsibilities of local boards of health in Massachusetts, uh, it, it's a long paragraph, but we're here to uh, protect the public from disease, uh, and we have a lot of regulations that are mandated by the state of Massachusetts to allow us to do that. Um, basically, we want to protect our families from communicable diseases, ensure safe drinking water. Uh, we're responsible for sewage and septic installations. Um, license inspect the food dis uh, distribution. What that is is basically the restaurants and the uh, extra marts and stuff like that. Uh, we investigate the uh, nuisance complaints and we also uh, oversee the, uh, the permits for pool inspections and beaches. And we, we, the last 
and I'm not going to do every slide point by point, but just to give you a mix of what we do, kind of highlight the, the information. Uh, we've been spending a lot of time recently uh, coordinating with emergency response, basically uh, from a public health aspect, chemical exposures and stuff like that. that that's been the, the biggest area that, of growth for local public health officials uh, is emergency response, the thing called uh, Region 2 Emergency Preparedness. Excuse me, do you work with TriEpic? Uh, we do work with TriEpic. Uh, it's a, this group that I'm referring to tonight, right now, is it's a very, it's a larger group. It's 72 communities. Um, there's a lot of us that belong to the Region 2 that do go to TriEpic, um, but we usually have a, a, a representative at each meeting. Um, this is just a, a sample list of the type of regulations that we work with. Um, you know, I'll, I'll hike. Uh, highlight the, the larger ones that we spend most of our time with. Uh, the uh, Fitness for Human Habitation, the CMR 410 to 105, that, that will be our habitation inspections. When the office gets a call from a tenant, uh, they're, they're not satisfied with their living conditions and they think they're uh, not satisfied with the habitation code, we'd go out and do an inspection. Um, again, we do the uh, food inspections and we, uh, we would inspect all the uh, uh, the pools in town, we have a pool at the conference center, we have a pool at some of the condominiums like Riverview mm -hmm. uh, and Brookside, we go out and do pool inspections. Um, the, the latest hot items for, for pool inspections have been anything from, you know, making sure if they have a water slide that it's not a danger. We had that problem in the past. Also, the fencing around the pools has been a, a big problem locally. And one of the last things we've been working on, which kind of surprised me, is the uh, the fact that uh, we do have septic systems in town on the outskirts. The majority of the town is serviced by sewer, as you may know, but we do have quite a bit of septic system on the outskirts where there's no sewer pipe in the center of the road. Uh, basically, this is how we get it done with just the staff, is myself, um, the principal clerk is Maritza, the landfill monitor is Anna Smith, the landfill spotter is Bob Jones, and we have a recycling solid waste coordinator, Kim Grant. The board members are Rob Chikoski, who's the chairman, Dean Cook, vice chair, and Dave Williams. The interesting thing about, I just want to speak a little bit about the staff. Uh, if you look at uh, my position and Maritza's position, are they only two paid by the town? The remaining positions are all uh, reimbursed by Casella Corp. So I think that's interesting to know that the town is, uh, the money the town's spending and their tax dollars go to two positions and we actually have the five positions. Um, we also, because it's very technical what we do, uh, we count on uh, contractors and engineers. Uh, we've got Green Brown Consulting, who helps us at the curb, as you know. And then we have Ty and Bond, uh, Dave Murphy, who's a principal there. I spend a lot of time with Dave, and he uh, coaches us on stormwater management for the landfill. Uh, and then you've met, uh, from CDM, you met Bruce Haskell. We count on Bruce a lot as an outside consultant for the wells, the monitoring wells we have at the landfill. And then we have an, uh, a contract with uh, Harrington Hospital Preventative uh, Services. The Board of Health bylaws, uh, we have to follow up on any uh, communicable disease. Uh, it can contain, we, we would have to do a home visit, and our, the lady from Harrington, Deb, does that for us. Um, basically, my uh, qualifications, I've been, uh, about, uh, I've been a health director for about 15 years. Uh, got a lot of knowledge on uh, implementing and understanding regulations. And I'm a registered sanitarian, lead paint determinator, soil evaluator, system inspector, MOLO certified, and a member of the Mass Health Office Association. The, my latest certification that I did receive was the MOLO certification. That's a certification to manage landfills. It's given uh, out by a national organization called SWANA, Solid Waste Association of North America. Uh, some duties from the principal clerk, just to give you an idea what Maritza does in her day-to-day -day activities. She does the filing, the record keeping, answering the phone and stuff like that. Uh, the landfill monitor, she actually monitors the activities going up the landfill. We have a couple agreements with Casella and there's certain rules and laws that need to follow, so she follows up on that for me. Anna reports to me. Here's a couple of interesting pictures that I thought the, uh, the council would appreciate. That center picture is actually uh, the construction of a new cell at the landfill. That was, it's about a year and a half old. Um, 
And the picture to the bottom right is some stormwater management that's called the basin where we collect the storm runoff, not the leachate. Um, in the bottom left-hand corner is, uh, is they're getting ready just to cover the uh, solid waste for the day. And the top left is uh, they're collecting some well samples to do follow-up work. So Anna watches over those types of operations at the landfill. Uh, the other fellow we have up there is called our waste spotter, what Bob Jones does. Uh, if you can see the pictures there, he basically looks at every load that comes in and takes a picture. We have a goal, we have a combined goal when the town had a contract uh, with Wood Recycling Inc. that we wanted to take a majority of MSW. And the feelings, and if you look at the trash bags on both sides, those loads are good uh, transfer station MSW loads. We want, it, we want the MSW loads to promote uh, the most uh, methane gas production. And that's why we want the most methane gas. <laughs> we're currently underway, we're producing, with the methane gas, we're currently producing electricity. Uh, we call it the cat in the box. It's actually a cat generator. Uh, and some of the benefits we receive, uh, it, it, it can produce enough electricity for 2,000 homes, and it does really good on our carbon footprint and so on. And the, uh, one of the things we're having, because we, we have this new cat in the box, and we've done a lot of work at the landfill, we're currently uh, have an open house scheduled that everybody can come, residents, counselors, politicians, and anybody could come, and uh, that'll be September 20th, 2012. Um, this here is, I, I don't know how well you know the site, but um, the landfill will be right back here. This is called the old processing center. This was uh, where they used to uh, take the pile of wood uh, and, and try to recycle it in a large pile. What we're going to do is we're going to convert this site to what we call a welcome center. So when we get up to the 405, we'll be able to control the truck traffic and, and queue the trucks in this location. The new scale house will be here. And we have the household hazardous waste in this open area. And we're going to put up some screening from a uh, commercial drive right in these locations. So uh, that would be it for the landfill. Moving on to the, the um, kind of the education and uh, enforcement program. Uh, Kim Grant, who's our recycling solid waste coordinator, her type of activities uh, would be anything from raising videos, workshops, she's doing a lot of public speaking, uh, she answers a lot of trash and recycling questions at the office. The, the interesting numbers here, and I'll try to explain the, uh, the graph. This number right here is a real interesting number. If you look at that, that is actually the solid waste tonnages. Um, and the interesting thing is if you look at the old program, which is the square uh, slash line, we were, we were just about, about 500 tons, and now we're down a, about 300 tons. So we reduced the tonnage at the curb um, about 200 tons, which is really, really good. And that, what you're going to see there is you, you, that'll reflect in our recycling rates. And you can see here how the recycling tonnage numbers actually grew. That means we're recycling more. If you look at it, is a good high point there at about 120 tons. And that, and that is per month. This is what I call the heartbeat. I wanted to prove to everybody in town that we're actually, we watch a lot of numbers down at the health department. <clears throat> when, when I first got to the health department, we didn't know what was really happening at the curb. That kind of bothered me professionally. Um, so we've been tracking a lot of numbers. Uh, the, 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 uh, the numbers on the top, uh, and this number here, the number that I'm real proud of is 68 tons. That's the least amount of solid waste that the town of Southbridge, since tracking, has ever put out of the curb in one week. And if you look at the recycling numbers, I think that 61 uh, is the highest. And the reason why it dips so much is because we currently have an every other week recycling. The bottom is the recycling graph. The, the state's new approach to recycling is a thing called diversion. And that's one of the things that I've been trying to explain to people. Uh, and we've been doing really good with our diversion rate. It's kind of the, what we refer to as the new recycling rate. What the diversion rate actually means is <clears throat> you take all your recycling, your bulky waste, uh, in your organics, and you remove that from the waste stream, so that stuff does not hit the landfill. So if you can look at some of our uh, diversion rates, we're almost uh, about 
So that's very good. Some of the additional programs under the education uh, <clears throat> and enforcement program is uh, we started the community gardens with the help of Mr. Clark. Uh, we've organized rain barrels and we've been selling a lot of compost bins. We've kind of become a regional distributor of those uh, devices. And we've been doing uh, some summer programming with the, with the children down like at Brookside. And we organized an Earth Day event and we oversee the community cleanup. Some of the upcoming programs under the Education and Enforcement Program, uh, if you, we've, with our website, thinkreduce.com, uh, we've added a Facebook link. So that's, we feel that that's going to help us get our word out. And then we've been doing more filming of uh, recycling and trash videos. And uh, we recently received a grant from DEP and Casella matched the grant. We're going to be, we're in the mix, in the midst of putting 12 uh, recycling barrels downtown because we saw that we were not currently recycling downtown. The other fellow that, like I said, helps us at the curb is uh, Green Brown Consulting. Uh, he does the daily root checks. He's out on the street every day. Uh, he's issuing education materials, pamphlets, door tags, green stickers. Uh, he's talking to property owners and tenants. He, he sends letters of enforcement incidents, investigates complaints, verifies residents and recycling TOTA program. Uh, he recommends properties for citation to, to the Southbridge Police Department. This is probably one of our biggest changes in our program. Um, if you remember back in, uh, we had a, a, back in, I think it was in October, we had a we issued a lot of citations and there were some errors made by the police department and by the health department. Um, so we, we've kind of changed what we're doing. Some of the enforcement items he looks at, uh, you know, you can read them there, you know, as far as uh, no cover on the trash, you know, mainly bag trash or, or not in a container. Uh, the picture you see up there at the bottom right, uh, is an instance that we had. It was an illegal dumping incident uh, at Eastwood Road. It was cleaned up by New England's disposal technologies. So we are uh, going around and following up on complaints when somebody sees something. Um, if it's illegally dumped, we contract to clean it up and we follow up to make sure uh, that it's a safe area. The information that gets tracked by the enforcement <coughs> coordinator, the total incidents uh, about 2,500. Uh, he's put a lot of door tags out there. Uh, a lot of people asking about letters sent is, to this date. He sent out 625 letters. Um, the, the main thing, like I was referring to, is right in here. What this number is trying to describe is the loose bags at the curb between October and February were 30 to 50 per day. After that incident where we wrote the citations, they went down to two to six bags at the curb per day. I mean, if you think about it, just for a quick mathematical formula, we basically, we pick up at the curb over 6,000 households. So, you know, probably around 1,200 uh, people a day, or a little between 12 and 1,500, depending on who's using the program, per day. So we, we brought the compliance. That's loose bags at the curb. Brought it down to two to six. Um, here's a shot that I, I asked Eric to give to me. Um, it's the beforehand, obviously, it's self-explanatory, but there's even a TV in the mix. But this is what the curb used to look like to the left. This is what it looks like currently to the right. That's not every incidence, but I'd say we got about 90% compliance out there right now. Uh, so some of the highlights, you know, when we started this program, we are about 18% recycling rate. <clears throat> we're currently at 26 and you know the the high of the program we were receiving 104 tons roughly per week our low is 68 tons per week uh, we're on target with the master plan which is by year 2020 they want a 30 percent reduction and our total enforcement incidences was a little over 2100. Uh, that's all i had so i open it up to questions do you have any questions councilor mcdonald thank you madam chair when you say that Casella pays for the uh, three other people in the office, um, are those people contract employees or are they employed by the town of Southbridge and do they receive a pension after a set number of years, the 20 year? That's a great question. There is no pension that's specified that I know of. Uh, and there are, uh, there are employees of the town, employees at will. 
uh, and there's an understanding that uh, it's for the life of the landfill, like most of the things in the agreement with Casella. So when the landfill closes, the employees will get removed. I just want to make sure I understand. So they're not subject yeah. to the retirement system? Yeah, no, they, they are. Uh, they're employees of the town. They're entitled to benefits as part of the Casella contract. I'm sorry, Matt, through you, Madam Chair, I realize I jumped okay. quickly on that. Okay. Um, they, they are eligible for the pension plan because they work over the 20 hours, so they meet the requirements. We do collect some of those indirect costs that are, or, um, I guess, indirect costs, the health costs and the other insurances. We do collect some towards that, but I do not believe we recover all that. I would say, though, that on employees that are in that classification, the, the typical classification non police and fire, from an actuarial standpoint, that those employees, the amount that they contribute actually pays for their own retirement. So the amount that they contribute into the system is usually enough to offset what their uh, retirement allocation would be. So it is minimal dollars for the, uh, the impact on the uh, employees, uh, impact on the town. From the standpoint of contributing to the retirement. All right, thank you. Um, in terms of your MOLO certification, yes, uh, you said it was issued by SWANA, yes, the Solid Waste Association of North America. That's correct. Uh, who who generally makes up the membership of an organization like that? Uh, it's made up of uh, mainly uh, really you know professional engineers uh, throughout the nation, um, with a civil concentration. Uh, there's a lot of businesses in that organization, everybody from Casella to Waste Management. Um, so it's made up of professionals um, that have formed a group many years ago and they offer certifications. Okay, so mainly the contractors like uh, Waste Management, Casella, et cetera? Is no, it's an independent party. It's not, it's, not, it's, it's not run by any company. Those companies are on, they're on they, some of those companies hold you know, prominent board positions on SWANA. It's a nonprofit professional organization. Right. Association, yeah, I understand. Yep. Okay. Very good. And that's all I have. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Ms. Okay. Mayor. You're welcome. Councillor uh, Moriarty. You, uh, where, where, in your eyes, anyways, uh, is your department most efficient? We, well, we spend a lot of time at the landfill. I'd say we're most proficient there. Um, so, you know, I mean, we have, you know, help problems or uh, weaknesses in certain arenas on our day-to-day, -day. but uh, we know uh, all our staff, and myself included, know that the priority one is the landfill. Uh, we spend a lot of time there. It's, it's very, very technical. Uh, it takes a lot of time to go through the information, um, to know uh, how to motivate Casella to do the right thing, how to work with them, how to, how to be a good partner and protect the environment at the same time. And uh, on the other side of the coin, where in your department uh, are you least efficient? I, I think we, like I said, we have the weaknesses on some of the day-to-day -day activities. Um, you know, I as a director going out and doing inspections, <laughs> it isn't the most, it's not the best bang for the buck for the community. Uh, to pay me with my experience to go out and look at a housing inspection or to go into an extra mart or, and to do like a retail food inspection. Um, so that's why I think we're uh, inefficient. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a request. Um, thank you for this presentation. It was really comprehensive. There's a lot of great information here. Um, I was wondering if I could get a copy of your presentation, just because there's so much information. I feel like the slides sort of came through pretty sure. quick. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. This would be uh, readily available. Okay. Um, I, can I, will, give you, I will go through the we'll manager. Put it, we'll put it on the website maybe. That was good. I thought yep. that was comprehensive information. We'll put yeah. it on the website for folks. Yeah. I'll get it to Mr. Clark's office, and he'll put it up on the web. Great, thank you so much. Councilor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to Mr. Morin. Mr. Morin, I really appreciate your weekly re reports. They're right. very enlightening, and I love that you challenge the landfill. Right. I, I love that you and your organization is on top of um, the illegal dumping or right. the Ill illegal transportation, if you will, to the landfill. Correct. And I see a really, what I assume by what I read, is a very good working relationship with Casella. I have seen that improve um, significantly since you've been on board that Casella is working with you and they're actually starting to uh, penalize 
a lot of the vehicles that are coming up in there, they're keeping them out of the landfill, which, you know, I think is pretty significant. Yeah, the, the two points that I think, the two major changes that I kind of personally made at the landfill when I first got here, Bob Jones, the waste spotter, was up in the active area. I felt that it was a very unsafe situation for a town employee. So we moved him down and the, the picture showed him up on what we refer to as a perch. Um, so that took him out of uh, the bulldozer area and put him down in his own area, down in that, which will be the new welcome center. So we actually, we take pictures of every load that goes into that landfill. Um, so we make sure we're receiving the right waste. And if Bob has the permission to call people if he needs help on reviewing that type of waste or rejecting a load and somebody gives him a hard time, he, he usually will speak directly to Anna or uh, this fellow by the name of Steve Hosley, who's the operations manager for landfill for Casella. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. Anybody else have anything for Mr. Morin? Thank you so much yeah, thank for coming. You. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Just, Madam Chair, for the uh, next council meeting, uh, we don't have all the spots filled, but we will have the, uh, the town accountant and the finance director doing a presentation at the next council meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you for following through with this. I appreciate that. Agenda item number eight, Citizens Forum. Do we have any citizens who wish to come forward this evening? Please state your name and address. Hi, um, Maureen Doyle, 771 Lebanon Hill. Um, I wanted to thank the Future of Southbridge for organizing the cleanup on the 5th of August and for bringing the snacks. Thank you, Denise. <laughs> Um, there are some observations I wanted to share with you. There was a woman leading a group of teenage boys who were decidedly not excited to be picking up trash on a hot Saturday morning. Um, the woman, I think, was awesome. I don't know who she was, but she found this neat, large grasshopper and showed it to the kids. And she just had them interested, and they were interested in picking up trash after that. I thought it was a great combination of doing the chore and having a nature observation, and I wanted to share it. And several neighborhood people verbally acknowledged our efforts and thanked us. Um, I was going to mention the um, recycling bins downtown. <laughs> I really think that's needed, and Mr. Morin addressed that. So thank you. Um, and lastly, once again, I'm going to talk about cigarette butts. Um, there were tons and tons of cigarette butts in the gutters and the sidewalks. They look bad and they end up in the surface and the groundwater. Um, um, or polluting the soil with the noxious chemicals that end up in the filter. So if you're a smoker, please throw your cigarette butts away in the trash and don't litter and pollute the outside. Once again, I will make that plea. Um, to keep our environment clean. Thank you. Thank you for participating, Maureen. Do we have any other citizens who wish to come forward this evening? OK, we're going to move ahead then. Agenda item number nine, vote to confirm the appointment of Evelyn Petrelli of Southbridge to the Planning and Development Subcommittee for a one-year term effective August 1st through July 31st of 2013. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Can we have a roll call, please? Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Paliquin? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Seven yes. Thank you. Agenda item number 10, vote to confirm the appointment of Jamie <coughs> Staslin of Southbridge to the Planning and Development Subcommittee for a one-year term effective August 1st through July 31st, 2013. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Council Moriarty? Yes. Council McDonald? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Council Peliquin? Yes. Council Vandal? Yes. Council Clemens? Yes. Council Marcucci? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 11, vote to confirm the appointment of Jim Pioppi of Southbridge to the DPW subcommittee for a one-year term effective August 1st through July 31st, 2013. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councilor Vandal. Um, I want to say that the town of Southbridge should be very uh, happy that we have Mr. Pioppi. He's taking time off from his business to, you know, give us some time. 
and uh, I'm grateful that you know he's on my committee. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Can we have a roll call, please? Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Peliquin? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 12, vote to confirm the appointment of Mark Morin of Southbridge to the DPW subcommittee for a one-year term effective August 1st through July 31st, 2013. So Second. Any discussion? Councilor Vann. I want to say the same thing about Mark Morin. He's a contractor, and uh, we're very fortunate to have him on the DPW subcommittee. Thank you. Thanks, Councilor. A roll call, please. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Peliquin? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Seven yes. Thank you. Agenda item thir number 13, vote to authorize the town manager to execute documents relative to the CDBG housing rehabilitation program for a two-year period to expire June 30th, 2014. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Peliquin? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Seven yes. Thank you. Agenda item number 14, vote to ratif ratify the proposed CDBG contract agreement between the Town of Southbridge and Fuss and O'Neill Incorporated, a consultant fee not to exceed $37,600 for the sidewalk engineering and design for Chestnut Street. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor Vandal? Yes. Councillor Clements? Yes. Councillor Marcucci? Yes. Councillor Moriarty? Yes. Councillor McDonald? Yes. Councillor Nicola? Yes. Councillor Peliquin? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 15, vote to ratify the contract between the Town of Southbridge and Mass DOT and or ET&I Corporation to replace 1,100 feet of eight inch water main in the area of East Main Street and North Woodstock Road with 12 inch main in the amount of $225,000 of which $180,000 is for replacement of the main and up to $45,000 to take any other additional actions necessary and to appropriate $225,000 from FY 2013 water enterprise revenue. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Just, just for the record, the company's name is ET and L. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion. Councillor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just I have a couple of questions. In in terms of uh, this amount of money, what effect will that have on the ratepayers going forward in this upcoming year? That's yep. my first question. No, nope, good question. Uh, what we found out is that we've gone through our revenue projections for what we actually build, and we anticipate that the budget for this year, what we allocated for 2013, was um, I think it was 3.2 million. The revenue projection that we have done is up to 3.5 million, so we have $300,000 more than we had anticipated because things have gone well. Uh, so what we did was we've decided to take it from additional water enterprises. Because this is additional revenue coming in, there's no impact to the ratepayers for this year. Okay. Thank you. Um, in, in looking at some of the information, it's a currently an, an eight-inch main. Uh, is there a 12-inch main, main that feeds this eight-inch main that we're trying to just expand and increase? No. I'm, I'm somewhat limited in terms of, but I'll, I'll do my best here to try to explain what's, what has transpired. We have two 8-inch mains in that area. Uh, they both, I guess, feed into each other. Those 8-inch mains are minimally adequate for fire suppression. We had a study done by Dewberry to look at our overall system, and Dewberry has come out and they said, if you're going to make any changes, one change that you should seriously consider for fire flow purposes is to replace those eights with a 12. So we're doing this primarily because the study, and the study just came out, it's still technically in draft form, but with the work being done on the road, we didn't want to wait and then say a year from now, oops, we need to do it and cut up a brand new road. So we decided to go forward with this to fix that. And what came out of subcommittee is that that eight inch main will be abandoned and the 12 inch main will be operational. 
just for full disclosure, actually 2,100 feet is actually being uh, needed to be replaced. The work area is only 1,100 feet, so there are going to be two eight inches on either side that we will come back with and try to get that accomplished. Because obviously, when you take an eight inch and put it into a 12, you still really get the capacity of just the eight. But the only reason why we're doing that now is because of the road work being done for the benefit of improving fire suppression services in that area. Okay, very good. And uh, thank you, Mr. Major. The last question I would have then would be: um, Is the tower included in this price, the water tower, or is that? Yeah, there was actually. Um, this is one where the material was read as backup material as part of the report, so it talked about a tower and 2,100 feet, but it came out at the subcommittee meeting that the tower is just part of the report that should not have been included in the, in the um, well, the, it was included in the original motion, but it wasn't in the final motion because it was realized that that error was made, so it's been vetted out. A, a tower, in all honesty, is probably about a million dollars. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we, we did vet that out, and all what's being requested for now for that 225 is the 1,100 square feet of uh, pipe in the construction area that ETNL is doing on behalf of the state uh, by Ideal Pool. Okay. Uh, and I'm sorry, Madam Chair, I said the last question, but I did have one more. I, uh, the letter said that there's supposed to be a period of time that the 12 inch main would lay there dormant until it is brought online, or do we intend on bringing that online as soon as it's able? Yeah, actually, another good point that came out of the subcommittee meeting is that we are going to activate that now and try to put the laterals in now. There's, there's no reason to put a 12 inch line in and then to activate the laterals after the fact, because you do cut up the road when you activate the laterals. So the part of the project is to do that. That wasn't contemplated when the uh, DPW director came in, so if there's additional dollars that are required, we'll come back because we have changed the scope a little bit from after the subcommittee meeting. But in order to try to get some negotiating room and see how much we can get for the dollars we have, we'll, we'll give that a go initially. Very good. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Manager. You. Thank you, Madam Chair. No problem. Any other questions regarding this agenda item? Okay. Could we have a roll call, please? Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Paliquin? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Okay, agenda item number 16 is Councilor's Forum. We'll start with Councilor Vandal. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Maurice Capistrand. He was on the DPW subcommittee meeting for all of about 10 years, and uh, it, it wasn't an easy task getting out in the winter and, you know, rainstorms and hurricanes and all this. And he, he made it there every time. He, he, never, he never missed a, a DPW subcommittee. So I'd like to thank him. And uh, item number two, the field house at Morris Street Field. I've asked in, in the past, I think I asked six or seven months ago, that we need a security light down there to stop the vandalism and the graffiti on, on the building. Uh, let's see. The weeds downtown, not, not only downtown, throughout the town. There's some weeds growing up there at least two feet tall. And you know, it's ridiculous, and I'm still getting calls. So I mean, these weeds gotta be taken care of. I know, I know it's probably not you know, the first priority, but they've gotta be get, taken care of. Thank you, that's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor McDonald. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I did, just uh, to caveat off what uh, Councillor Vandal said, I did get a call about South Street as well on the, on the weed thing. So um, the other thing I want to do is express my deepest thanks and appreciation to the school building committee. Uh, they've done a fabulous job of getting ready to open up a very wonderful facility all through their efforts and their oversight in, in keeping it uh, on schedule and, and within budget uh, and just appreciate the work that they did. Uh, and that's all I have for this evening. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thanks, Council. Council Moriarty. Uh, just plugging two quick things. Uh, one, uh, this upcoming Thursday at 7 o'clock at the Community Center, the former Armory, uh, will be an organizational meeting for the Pioneer Fast Pitch Softball Association. Uh, the last league in town kind of went defunct a few years ago, uh, and there's some people trying to put that together uh, to bring softball back. There's currently no feeder system for the school system. Uh, which is evident with their record the last few years. Uh, Friday, September 7th, uh, is a fundraiser for the Relay for Life uh, at the Knights of Columbus on Worcester Street. Uh, connections with Gary McKinstry, 
uh, local medium, psychic, uh, seer, whatever word you want to use. Uh, tickets are $30 in advance or $35 at the door. It, basically, it, the ticket covers uh, some food that will provi be provided by Elm Center Cafe as well as the event itself. Doors will open at 6.15. The event begins at 7. Thank you. What is this a fundraiser for? Relay for Life. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear that part. Thank you. Okay. Um, count, and, that, and that's everything? You're all set? Councilor Marcucci. I'm all set, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Peliquin. Um, yes, I have a couple of items. Um, first, I'd like to thank the town manager for all of his work securing the uh, state funding for the tornado relief, particularly the drainage in the uh, Charlton Street area. I've heard a lot about that going door to door this spring. So thank you for your efforts on that. Um, I also had a question about the Economic Development Commission. That's a, that's a public board with public meetings, right? Because I just I noticed in the last weekly report that they had a meeting and I didn't see it on the meeting calendar that we get from the manager's office. And I was wondering if in the future we could get, I mean, I'm sure it was publicly posted and everything, but I'd, you know, I'd love to have it on the list of the meetings that we get as the council. I'm sorry, I, I don't understand. The Economic the Development Commission. You'd meetings. like to have the EDP on there? Right. On the, bit, on the meetings. Okay. The meeting list. I'll, I'll see if we can do that. Okay, great. Uh, and a couple of things relating to the website. Um, I was wondering if we could update the list of town council subcommittees on the website and who's on which subcommittee because people keep asking me and I know that I have a, a sheet that lists everything but I don't always have it on my person when I run into somebody at the grocery store and they want to know who's on which subcommittee I don't remember off the top of my head. So I'd love for that to get updated. Um, and also uh, somebody has asked me if I could follow up on a request to get um, town councilors email addresses listed on the website. I guess this is something Councillor Regis asked about last year. So those of us who do use email to communicate, if, if that could be publicly available for those of us who are interested in. I think we, we did offer that before, and I had the um, Will Knoyer, the, he does our technology, and he approached each individual counselor, and we left it up to each indiv individual counselor how they would like to handle it. So it's, it's really done on a personal level. Okay. As I say that, we probably did that over a year ago. So we have two new members of the council. And certainly, if you'd like that, I can have Will Knoyer call oh, you yeah. both to, to see how you would like to do that. And if there's any other counselors that would like to change or update how they do business, they're more than welcome to, to let Mr. Knoyer know. OK, great. Thank you. Just in general, if you want to give me an email just to the public, um, I check my email all day long, but I don't necessarily check my voicemail all day long. So if you want to get in touch with me sooner rather than later, email is usually the best way to get in touch with me. So thank you. Okay. And that's it for me, that's Madam Chair. Councilor Clements. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to thank you for the part you played on the uh, school building committee. I know you spent a lot of hours, and uh, so I want to thank you for your efforts beyond town council here and your duties here. And uh, it is a beautiful school. I got to take that tour a week or so ago with the town manager and the others, and uh, so looking forward to the grand opening and getting the kids in there and really making it work for the entire community. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you. I just want to make a uh, mention of something. Recently, I had a an epiphany, and I'm now walking at night. And in doing so, I've gotten an opportunity to see some sites that are wonderful and some sites that I wished I'd never seen. One thing that the people in this community need to know is if you have brush on your property, it can't be out onto the sidewalks. I don't think that people who have are pushing baby strollers or who might be in a wheelchair should have to get a face of your, your um, brush or shrubbery when they're trying to walk on the public sidewalks. So if you have overgrown brush, shrubbery that you may forget about because it's on the front part of your property and you probably never walk out on the sidewalk in front of your home, please take a look because um, quite a few properties in this community um, make it very difficult to pass by on the sidewalk. I can walk off the sidewalk into the roadway, but I, I can't speak for everybody. So that's, that's on the uh, homeowner. Please take a look at your property. Um, also, I am a little bit on the war path because I, I have seen some trash um, on people's property. And um, I don't know, I guess I, it's not really breaking a law, but it certainly is an eyesore 
so you may want to take a, take a look and, and just give, try to give your property a little bit of an objective point of view when you look at it and see if there's some way that you might just kind of spruce it up, pick up. Uh, soap and water is pretty cheap and a, a trash bag isn't, you know, coming from the bag lady, the trash bag isn't really that much more expensive either. Um, other than that, I have nothing else. Agenda item number 17 is discussion of next meeting date. Could we have that from you, Councillor? Sure. Monday, August 27, 2012, 7 p.m. here in Council Chambers. And I would also like to state that even I did not know about the change back here. I know we announced um, the library, but it's my understanding when I received my packet and, and found the information that there was a change made due to some of the concerns by the cable, um, the guys running the cameras and, and such. So uh, all understandable, um, but uh, there was no it was not done intentionally to try to get people to go to one place versus another. It was a surprise to me and I think perhaps to some other people too. If you didn't happen to read that heading on your council meeting, you might have showed up over at the library. So apologies on that, but um, the information came out into print when, it, when the agenda was posted. So we have to just be mindful to always pay attention to that heading where it says the meeting is because things may change in two or three weeks. So I encourage you to, to be mindful of that and take that little responsibility to check if anything has changed before the meeting. Don't just go by my word. Um, so August 27th here in the chamber. Thank you, Councillor. Agenda item number 18 is vote to enter into executive session according to Mass General Law 39, section 23B to review executive session minutes regarding collective bargaining, litigation, purchase, exchange, taking, lease, or value of real property, discipline or dismissal brought against an, inv an individual, and if matter is concluded, vote to release said minutes and to adjourn. All in favor? Okay. Oh, you want a roll call for that? Okay, we'll have a roll call for that. Council Marcucci? Yes. Council Moriarty? Yes. Council McDonald? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Council Pelliquin? Yes. Council Vandal? Yes. Council Clements? Yes. Seven yes.